Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad you are joining me for our Sunday worship today. So today, before we get into the Lord's Word of God, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for drawing the people that you want to hear the message. I pray that you open their eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to what it is you want them to know today. And your will always be done, Lord, not mine. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And we'll start reading at verse 3. Now as he sat on Mount Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And so, brothers and sisters, we're in the beginning of sorrows now. We've had wars, famine and pestilences, and more are coming. And now we'll read the second passage. Turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 7. We'll start reading verse 9. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And reading from 13. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So brothers and sisters, if you're saved today, and you're part of that virgin church, God is going to take us up before the great tribulation, and we will be with our Lord and Savior in heaven. Amen? Amen. So I hope you're excited about that. I am. But brothers and sisters, we have to go through a test, a trying time. We're in a trying time now. You know that we have that COVID disease and we've had wars and we have famine, but more are coming and we need to prepare ourselves as children of God, not to get mad at God for anything that's happening in the world. The world is corrupt, immoral, and that's why Jesus is going to come. And that's why he's going to take us out of here. And that's why he's going to punish who's left and destroy the earth with fire and send the bad people, the people who do not receive his grace, his love and live for him 
to hell. But we do not get mad at God for anything. We don't question God. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, we all have to be tested. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 10, it reads, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So he tests our minds. And no matter how bad things get, because things are going to get worse, the world is going to see trauma. When havoc comes, it comes all of a sudden. Earthquakes, tornadoes, war, it comes all of a sudden. And you need to prepare yourself. As the scripture tells us, if you want to build a house, you need to know how much it's going to cost you. So you finish building the house. And people don't laugh at you and say, well, look at that man. He started to build the house and he didn't have enough money to finish it. We have to be prepared for whatever comes our way. Prepared. Prepare yourself for the worst case scenario. You pass that test with flying colors, as Job did. When God allowed his children to die at a young age, and he lost all his belongings, what did Job do? He said, I came from my mother's womb naked, and naked I shall return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So use that as an example. God's requirement is that we live by faith and grace. And the apostles, they were tested beyond what a human could actually bear. But God gave them more grace to be able to withstand what happened to them. And we know from the early writers that the apostles all died a painful, suffering death, except for John. And John, they put him in a big barrel of hot grease to kill him. But it wasn't God's plan, and he lived. So they put him over on an island, the very island that he wrote Revelation. But Peter was crucified upside down. He said, I am not worthy to die as Christ did. And he was crucified upside down. It's believed that Paul, his head was cut off because you couldn't crucify a Roman citizen. But they all died martyr deaths for our Lord and Savior. And our Lord and Savior who did no crime, who had no sin in him, died for you and me. So whatever comes our way, whatever test you and I have, we have to be like Job and never curse God and keep the faith and grace that God has given you. Yes. Abraham was tested. Hebrews 11, verse 17, it reads, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Fortunately, we don't have to do what Abraham did, but he did it for the fear of God, for the love of God. And he passed the test. And you and I have to pass the test. Amen? Amen. But you saw what the rewards are. We'll be in heaven with our Lord and Savior. God will wipe our tears away. There will be no more tears, no more dying. We will live in eternity with our Lord and Savior. And we will 
eat the fruits of the land for zero cost. Amen? Amen. So keep the faith, brothers and sisters, and just love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And we'll all be together with our Lord and Savior someday forever and ever. Amen.